Well, we have gathered together for an evening of peace, love, and understanding about which there is nothing funny. It's in space, no one can hear you laugh. And sadly, no one can hear you scream. And so we are going to play Alien. Now, thanks to the efforts of Eloy, we are relatively familiar with the game, or probably more familiar with it than we would have been otherwise as the, the way the week worked. But as you can tell, there may be some alien fans uh, in the group. I see that Ivan is sporting his ship shirt, which is pretty fantastic. And uh, our colonial mean, uh, Marines are being represented by Craig in the corner. And look at that face on, on Jose. He is so serious right now. He is ready. And he's got the olive green. Elevator to hell. <laughs> he's got the olive green shirt, too. So he's in uniform. That's right. Drab green. Drab, drab. drab green, yes. There's no drab in that green. <laughs> All right. Now, one of the things I think should be clarified for people who are huge fans of the alien property is that as a group, we kind of had a discussion about our favorite parts of Aliens, uh, of the Aliens franchise, and we're going with Alien and Aliens, full stop. So no other uh, part of the continuity uh, really matters. And we'll be riffing off of that material based only on what was seen in the movies. But we also agreed that we preferred the extended cuts. So there are, you know, interpretations of things or there are particularly famous scenes that have a little bit more heft to them in those. So, so with those caveats, let's move on. So we are playing a squad of colonial Marines. Everyone has uh, backup characters because we're not the most optimistic bunch. We are engaging in campaign play. And so what is commonly seen in the cinematic play with there being story points and the like, this is not active. Right? So what we have is what we have. <laughs> and your agendas, when they come into play, will be potentially earning you additional experience. So let's begin with Craig. Craig, who is Geek? Uh, private first class James Greek, known as Geek. Um, ah, you know what, I didn't check everybody's. Uh, might be the youngest. Um, so he's about 24, 25 years old, um, but has been, in, been a Marine since he was 18. Um, Loves computers, loves uh, comms. Uh, so he's a com tech. Uh, so he's earned earned the nickname Geek. Um, a firm believer in squads, teamwork, chain of command, leadership. Firmly believes that following orders and talking and communicating and keeping everybody up to date. Nobody hiding something, all of that type of stuff. That that's what keeps us alive. Um, and he's not a full-on <laughs> hippie, but he's a little bit uh, almost spiritual about that belief. Um, so think think less hippie, more maybe bad therapist. <laughs> like we should talk this out. So that's that's uh, Private First Class James Greek. Sounds like a very sincere friend. <laughs> and Jose. All righty then. So I'm playing Jason Rock Kaminsky. Uh, he's a, you know, he's, he's one of these guys who grew up in a colony and enlisted in the, in the Colonial Marines just to get out of like whatever, you know, mining or belting or whatever it is that they did. So he's so he's he's a career marine. He's recently been promoted to sergeant. So he's the, the CEO of the, of the of the NCO of of the team, and uh, he's uh, 
he said, you know, uh, not uh, your most uh, patriotic, you know, uh, gung-ho type, but he is a by-the-book sort. And he, he's about 30 years old. He's, he's seen some action. And he's become, you know, a little bit uh, jaded, you know, the thousand miles there when nobody's looking, that kind of guy. He's a former uh, frontline rifleman recon type. So, so, but that obviously that's not what he does. Anymore. Okay. Uh, I don't yeah, Leo Baxter, he's, a, he's an ancient. Ancient man, 40 years old, another career Marine. Dad was a Marine, too. And, um, you know, he's a team player, um, not a particularly friendly team player, but a team player. You know, he's a smart gunner. You flush him out, I shoot him. It's everybody's kill. Nobody's a hero. We all go home. Um, man's corporal, but not really using the rank, you know, because we've been put together from different squads. And so... Uh, doesn't really want to be a squad leader, but you know, he's not a super friendly guy, not an unfriendly guy, but he's he's just seen a lot and um, kind of no nonsense. And he talks about that much, okay, usually, mostly. And Aloy, I'm playing Corporal Bienvenido Rios, also known as Bodie. And he is a former hospital corpsman, uh, now uh, assigned as fire team leader. Uh, uh, kind of resents uh, uh, Sergeant Kaminsky's dry uh, command tone, right, and favors more uh, <laughs> direct communication with the team. But uh, yeah, looking forward to a new position of leadership here in this in the squad. Okay. So where is this squad? That is the new burning question. Now, as Ivan mentioned, and uh, as is very much on Leo Baxter's mind, I guess, the squad has been through an awful lot of action, primarily with pirates along the frontier. And so squads are being reformed from the remains of other squads. The pirates are getting bolder, and corporate pressure on the USCMC, as we hear trickling down from the brass above, is increasing and increasing why can't our colonial assets be protected you know why are we supplying you with all this this heavy equipment and uh, so which doesn't go without creating some resentment in the core now part of your outfit was sent in the middle of the night on a totally off the books seeming mission, right? Hush hush, the squad was, was broken up and they were put aboard uh, one of the older Conestogas and sent out to parts unknown, right? And this was about two weeks ago. In that same time frame, a few days later, you lot were placed aboard one of the newer ships, one of the Bougainville cruisers, right, called the Montebello, and were sent way out on the frontier to protect a small, seemingly unimportant refueling station. Scuttlebutt in the unit is, of course, that this mission is to support a larger push against the pirates. Okay. 
few days ago, more scuttlebutt, that there was a distress call. And arguments among the top brass about the distress call. Then you were loaded back aboard the Montebello, put in hypersleep, still not knowing what your destination was, but loaded for bear. You have arrived. Hypersleep chambers are opening. for Sergeant Kaminsky. The crew roster is being displayed of those corpsmen who are being awakened now for immediate deployment. First detail that you're being notified of is that you have been awakened ahead of schedule on the outskirts of the system. You now know the system, as does uh, Corporal Rios. You are at Zeta-2 Reticuli. Beneath your feet, as you hit the cold decks coming out of the hypersleep, you can feel the rapid shaking of the heavy guns in operation. And distantly, you can feel the shift of the ship moving through evasive maneuvers. Because you are just waking up, it's very likely that the ship is doing this entirely through its automated combat routines. And as the fog is beginning to lift from from cryosleep, you hear the audible and visible alarms begin to fade in as the ship recognizes that there are people awake to hear them. That's our cue. That's your cue. <laughs> I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for the CEO. Uh, oh, oh, no. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, I'm going to make sure. All right. Rice and shine, ladies. Saddle up. All right. Yeah. Open at him. Open yeah. at him. Shake it off. Come on. And I start putting out my armor and grabbing yeah. my gear. And I, I guess I, 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 I'd ask you that probably the, 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 the computer, right, is like uh, status report. Two enemy hostiles engaged. And then there's another rapid fire shaking of, of the deck plating. Two enemy hostiles rendered immobile. Well, there's that four hostiles total. Two hostiles. All right. We better get to the ready room, see if any uh, boarding actions will be required. Oh, okay, great. I thought they were waking us up to like just fly out the air lot to go against these things. Well, those alarms. Hey, Rocky, oh. you want to go up to go up to the bridge and uh, do, do a full system check. Okay. Now, as everybody's like stumbling around, getting their their gear on, and and uh, you know the the temperature of the room is slowly coming up to a, a comfortable level and you, you can hear you know lights and, and other systems coming on to accommodate you. There are empty hypersleep chambers which are outfitted you know with nameplates and and whatnot for crew who should have been there. Right? And among them are the Wayland Yutani rep who is frequently involved in your missions and 
there is no sign of the artificial person who is normally assigned to your crew. Uh, an artificial person who goes by the name of Pope. Now were they were they frozen with us initially? When you sure. were loaded. Yeah. When you were loaded there were there was no sign of them, right? Oh. Which is not which is not unusual. Well, but their chambers guess, are empty. Their chambers were like never used. Never used. Okay. Yeah. I guess this was a little too dangerous for uh, for the rep, huh? Well, we don't Simplify need things. We don't need them in our hair anyway. All right. Nobody, nobody load up till we know what we're doing. We don't need a, we don't need a, a, a ammo holes in this bucket of bolts. Let's go. All right, so moving into the ready room, being able to check the systems. Um, everything is, is powering up for your convenience. Some of it, of course, you have to access and put in your uh, particular unit codes, right? And it becomes pretty obvious that the four of you were awakened to make some form of assessment. If any other members of the squad um, should be awakened or deployed. The rest of the ship is still in hypersleep. Right. The ship is operating fully on automatics. So the system map comes up displaying the second sun of the Zeta Reticuli system, right? Zeta 2, with its three moons around one very large gas giant. of particular interest probably is that there is data on the readout which indicates the Conestoga class Sulaco was last reported in this system. So what what do we have? As I asked the, the the computer, what do we have on the hostiles? What kind of uh, you know ship uh, types were we engaged in? All right. So there's a rapid shifting of the the map detail, and we zoom in to a, a moon with a light registers as unpleasant atmosphere. The coding of the planetoid is LV426. It has recently been named Acheron. It has a claim on it by Wayland yutani as a future colony currently tagged as being terraformed. But there is a, what Geek would recognize, there is an interactive or an interrogative marker on it about its status. And it's the marker used for things like colonial insurrection, civil war, that kind of thing, which may explain why the Sulaco was deployed here. But as you slide away from that into a position that shows you more of the orbital mechanics, we can see LV-426, we can see its control station which is supposed to be in orbit around LV-426, but has been moved out to a deeper orbit. More like a, a system entry control point rather than a docking and cargo receiving point, which is where you would expect it to be and which it had been previously. And near that station, near, that station, there are two ships drifting, powered, but no longer, uh, no longer in controlled flight through space. One of them is the Sulaco. The other is an unidentified, unregistered vessel, which just screams pirate. Are those two ships 
docked together in some point, or are they just traveling along parallel paths? Yes, uh, they are drifting near each other, near enough mm -hmm. to have been engaging each other, mm. um, but are now just, you know, drifting with momentum. Mm. And they are still flagged as targets by the Montebello's uh, combat systems. So the, so the Soluco was, was the other hostile, according to Mother. Yes. Okay. Hey, Greek, see, see what you can get on sensors. See if there's any life pods going anywhere. Or if we think that uh, the, these, there's still life forms aboard those ships. Aboard those ships. All right, I'll do a scan. Wait, the okay. Sulaco was, a, was a, one of our ships, right? Was it firing on us as well? I'm going to check the logs. Okay. Confirm that. So, according to the flight logs, as uh, you began to make your deceleration into the system, the first anomaly is the discovery of the station in its new location. The second discovery is being fired upon by two hostiles. The combat system was awakened and neutralized both hostiles. This was made easier thanks to intimate knowledge of the combat strengths and weaknesses of the Sulaco. Mm. So by attacking the Conestoga's blind side, the ship was able to pass over the spine of the Sulaco and get a clean shot on the drive system of the other vessel, rendering them both inoperative. Can I find out point, you oh, are awakened? Can I find out if this was where we were supposed to be, right? So, like, was this our destination or were we pulled off course? LV-426 was your destination. Okay. And this is flagged as, um, I'm blanking on the term I need. The, the squad leader, I'm going to call him a squad leader. If there's a better term, let me know. Um, it's flagged for eyes only for the squad leader at this point. Hey, Rock, we got eyes only uh, for why we're here. All right, so I'll, I'll take a look then. Okay. Privately, or are you just going to display it to? I'll display it to the team. Okay. Yes, you were sent to LV426 in order to rendezvous with the Salako, who had issued an all points distress call. That was that question. I guess we, I guess we, it was decided we we're going to answer the distress call. Well, I guess we got here too late. I don't know uh, about the, that. We got to dock with them and find out what happened. Right. right. They were firing on us. That's probably mean the other ship must be pirates. They must now, have based, taken over the Salaco or the Salaco yeah. or something. Based on the report, receipt of the, um, of the transmission was 19 days ago there were so, there was at least one day of argument and uh, and then one day for for sustaining your yeah. Yeah. yeah that's why we have a rapid response team because we have we also have to take into account the time before we get deployed uh let's uh i guess you know we'll as I, let's set a course to to approach uh, the the Sulaco then. See if we can get any reading on whether there's any life forms on board, and uh, probably should hail them. What kind of us? Uh, what kind of scale uh, scanning capabilities do I have right now, or do we need to get closer? You can get a, a fairly reasonable assessment of the drive and power systems, but by design, you would not expect to have good readouts on the weapon systems or uh, computer systems and life support and that sort of thing. Um, well, we can to yeah, so I, we, we should probably, I, I, I guess this is our mission, so we, we got to get the rest of the crew up so we can be fully operational. All right. 
I'll get the rest of the squad thought out. Uh, see if you can hail them. Maybe it looks yeah. like pirates to me, but uh, let's figure out who's in command of of those ships. I slap slap a geek on the shoulder. Not really slap, but he's gonna grab grab his shoulder and say, "They were firing us. I don't think they want to talk." Every, let's figure that out. Let's figure that out. So I'm gonna do just an electronic ping to see if I get any response. I let him figure it out. I'm walking. Okay. Just one ping. One ping. Just only. to see if I get an initial, initial anything yeah. back. The Sulaco is responsive, uh, meaning you know if a if a shuttle is dispatched uh, or a landing craft is dispatched, you can expect uh, the automatics to cycle you through the airlocks and 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 that sort of stuff. And it should be able to identify friend from foe, which could actually be a problem. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to try to open up a voice channel and see if, it, if that's accepted. Okay. How long are you going to wait? Um, give it a couple pings, right? So I guess it kind of the uh, what, what the standard operating procedure would be. So I'm not going to sit there for an hour and a half, right? So um, if I get no response, and you know, I would imagine there's probably a three minute expect expected return time on something like that. So and then like a looping message could be recorded and you know, yeah. The, so. Okay. So there's no immediate response within within that parameter and. Um, you do go through the process of, of waking up the flight crew and, and, uh, we're at our destination anyway, so might yes. as well throw All everyone right. out. Okay. And will you have them on alert? Um, yeah, we're, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're about to do our job, right? This is, this is, this is what we're going to do with the Sulaco and, and, and yeah. find out what's going on. Yeah, yeah, we 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 need to be ready for for even if some of us go over, we're gonna have to be Marines ready for possible attempts at boarding. I mean, there's two hostiles that were mobilized and not destroyed. Right. Now, in none of business. you are uh, particularly adept at piloting and space operations. Right. So, mother takes it upon herself to give a prompt, right? Um, assessment of orbital mechanics indicates the collision with station is due in three hours, 29 minutes. And she's talking about the, the inoperable ships are continuing in their, their direction. And at least one of them is going to impact with the station. The station itself is an automated docking ring. It's for the transfer of cargo and whatnot so that landings don't have to be done and, and uh, that sort of thing. Hmm. Well, you've got two ships to push out of the way, huh? That's right. Well, I guess we no need to... No time for phone calls, Geek. I need to, we need to board the Sulaco and, and get it out of, you know, see if we can divert its trajectory or better yet get it to stop plus figure out who's in command down there if we can it depends on how bad uh we damage her hmm. does the monobello have any type of towing capabilities so is there any anything built into the ship that allows me to you know connect to it with cables or harpoons and much like the Sulaco, this is a ship of war, right? Mostly designed to deliver you places and provide fire support. Yeah. Um, so landing craft and its own heavy guns, and it has enough offensive capability to deal with other ships that you may encounter on the way. But it's, it's a true transport, an armored, armed troop transport, more than anything else. Got it. Okay. Um, all right, so that, that sets a timetable for us, see if we can uh, uh, 
keep that uh, or and, and a, a question uh, can the guns on the uh, Montebello tear up this ship so they don't damage the station if necessary yes if you are unable to provide course correction then the ships will need to be um, forcibly redirected <laughs> all right well, Rock, not to tell you your job, it looks like you should bring some techies aboard each one of those ships just to see if they can fly them out, at least a Sulaco, and then after that, just blast them to hell. But, yeah. Right, plus we need to see where those Marines are at. Maybe they're being held uh, prisoners. If it was up to me, I'd, I'd hit the Sulaco first and the, and the other ship second, just to, uh, for the yeah, big that's that's number one priority, other than find people, is to make sure that ship flies out of the way. Well, we don't want to blow yeah. that up. Well, that's our main mission is the Sulaco, so we'll we'll go there first. So we better get ready for uh, for boarding. Let's go. I want us to be there. I want us to be uh, on our way in, in ten minutes. Okay. Right on. So with is it, so is there is there like a, a navy officer, somebody who's going to be in command of the ship? No, yes. That, okay. Uh, for exactly this sort of contingency, right? Like an Uber driver, right? Ooh. You're walking home. Need... <laughs> We're going to need one of those taxi drivers on the, on the Sulaco, too, to see if yeah. we can get it. Guaranteed, if we did some damage to it, its motor isn't going to be able to get it moving. But we'll have to, we'll have to take a taxi driver along and protect them. So the uh, the flight crew, right? The, the naval operations crew, um, who are simply brought out because of all of these complicated issues, um, they want to know what sort of landing craft it is that you would like to take over. Like if you're intending to force your way in or if you're intending to go over and play nice. Well, we gotta be able to force our way in because if, if the Sulaco was firing on us, we have to, we have to uh, assume that uh, its, mother will, yeah. its mother will recognize us as enemies. Okay. So you have a USC MC pilot, right? Call sign jumper, right? Who starts doing pre-flights and asks that the uh, the mission time of ten minutes be extended uh, to fifteen in order for uh, in order for the ship to be ready and armaments to be loaded aboard. All right, you got it. And that would really be pushing it. Yeah. So as your, squad, <laughs> as your squad files into the docking bay, you can see power loaders, you know, moving, trying to get uh, missiles loaded and other machines prepared. No, no lander, uh, that sort of thing. So you'll do a hard dock on the airlock and then we'll see. There's only a slight chance that the automated systems on the Sulaco will blow you to dust uh, before you dock. Well, one of the thrilling parts of being in the core. All right. Yeah. Now, Jumper isn't all that interested in being blown to space dust on the way over to rescue people on the Sulaco, so um, She's interested in having Geek right up front. That sounds good. That's what you always want, pretty boy, right, Shotgun? <laughs> if I wanted a pretty boy, Baxter, I would have called for you. I want someone uh, with skill. <laughs> you're too sweet, Jumper. You're too sweet. <laughs> See where compliments get you, Baxter? <laughs> I, hop right in, I hop right into the chair. Now you forget about Baxter and you focus. 
Right? You just got to think that we're in the right place at the right time. So if you see those homing beacons registering, that's the point where you tell me and where you start doing countermeasures at the same time. Because you can multitask, right? Hi. Hmm. Have I done this before? <laughs> Let's hope so. Or at least drilled it. <laughs> There's a first time for everything. Simulations count? Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm trying to exude as much confidence as possible. All right. So, Kaminsky and Rios, just this small squad, or are you taking more with you? That's a good question. I think we should take a couple of squads, right? If we can f fit in, I don't know, eight Marines? <laughs> oh, yeah, how many? Four, other, four others I'd like to have with us. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah. yeah. That would be a, a nice, tight fit. So there you go. <laughs> and your loadout? No, Heavy weapons, like light weapons, no weapons. Oh yeah, well, you know, everybody, everybody has their loadout, right? I have just yeah. a pulse rifle and uh, personal personnel armor, and uh, Baxter's our heavy gunner. So yeah, second best. Yeah, he has the smart gun, <laughs> right? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Well, the Very operator good. isn't smart. So while the last pre-flight checks are being completed, there's a brief time to run through to make sure all personal systems check. Uh, there is no um, higher grade officer who's going to be sitting back, right, on, on Overwatch to do command and control. You will be on your own. Okay. Not only is the ship not outfitted for it, uh, it's just not that kind of mission. The crew seems to be heavily stripped back from what would be a normal deployment. Okay, is Sarge. Of, is it because of the budget? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sarge, what's the plan? Head over to command center yeah. first, yeah. The bridge. Right. Let's. Yeah. Th that sounds good. We'll, as as soon as well, we're aboard. We determine that uh, what kind of defenses we have. Uh, bridge is our bridge is our main goal. See if we can take control of the ship. And, sir, I recommend everybody strap in just in case um, Jumper and I encounter uh, the need to move quick. Yeah. He's getting big ideas already. Mm, Roger that. You look tired, buddy. There'll be coffee on the Sulaco, man. Good natured tap. All right. Let's do it. Just a passion. And so, warning lights, right? And the, the interior lights of the docking bay are, are dropped and a, a low red lighting highlights the, the edges of the safe area while the yellow flashing warning lights cycle through everywhere. The ship itself begins to shake as it's left in its cradle. Then you switch to internal power and everything takes on a different hum. And then there's the distortion as you drop from ship gravity with all of its inertial dampeners into only the gravity of momentum. So there's a brief kind of zero G moment and then the thrusters kick in just for a second, just one controlled thrust, which tosses all the Marines to the side, right? But Geek in the, uh, in the cockpit is nice and comfortable at a nice steady one G, right? And the Sulaco, which seems small at this distance, begins to swim into larger view. And the, the devastating hits 
by the Montebello's guns on the drive section become more and more apparent. You'll be approaching the Sulaco from its one of its rear quadrants, right, coming in on the port side. You'll pass over the fusion core and come in on the command module. Um, the pilot has chosen this vector because the guns are currently pointed in a different direction. Always good to take the panoramic route in anyway. <laughs> Keep our eyes open. Just over the shoulder of the Sulaco, you can see the tumbling, far more damaged form of, of the pirate vessel. And inside its few windowed areas, there is evidence of you know, flashes of fire or other causes of human distress. On the, uh, the Sulaco or, or on the pirate ship? On, on the pirate vessel. Okay. The Sulaco is so heavily armored, it's yeah. just blackness in the space. So, uh, look, looks like um, old Mother Monte did a pretty good job here. Looks like she did fine while we were waking up. Okay. And as Jumper reorients, you can get a brief look back at the Montebello, which doesn't seem to have taken any return or hits from return fire. Hmm. No hits at all? Hey, man. Don't look at it too closely. It's a good luck is good luck. Well, I don't know, man. Doesn't look right. Docking in two minutes, says Jumper, in that very controlled voice of things are now really occupying her attention. Right. It doesn't look like she's doing much, right? No excess movements, but there's a lot of mental calculation of rates and vectors. And, and uh, so she's focusing in on, on that task. And that's when the Sulaco scans the dropship. Okay, we're, we're getting scanned. Um, what kind of countermeasures can I do? Well, you can provide uh, access codes and um, a lot of command level stuff if you can override the, the normal meet and greet computer system operation. So with your ComTech, it's time. All right, so we've got the first roll. What? It's Two for ComTech. Five for wits, so a total of seven dice. Nice. How bad can it be? Uh, I got one success. Okay, one's all you need. Yep. <laughs> so this answers that basic question of, you know, what can I do? Can I even make a handshake? Um, so the ship is on an alert footing, but it recognizes this drop ship as a friendly. And a stream of data begins to come in, indicating uh, what lock number, docking speed, that sort of thing. Because it's still classified as a combat, it's still classified as being on a combat footing, it's not directing you to the main lock. You're being flagged away from the main lock. So, uh two things. I'm going to send friendly back, right? So I'm going to acknowledge the friendly and, and reciprocate to it and then let um, let the crew hold know the situation. And uh, hey, Rock, do you want to, um, should we go where she's at? She's telling us to go or uh, do you think Jumper should uh, take a more direct route? Or should we just keep this handshake going? Um... How how much would we I'm sorry how much would we have to deviate from from a jumper's uh, plan? So, if you go to the lock that she had hoped for, you'd be near the flight deck. Okay. You're being directed to the main ship to ship lock. 
where the dropship remains on the outside. Okay. So it has to extend an umbilical. It's it's dangerous for you and the Marines. No, then let's let's go to the let's let's follow our original plan then. Go closer to the flight deck. Hey Jumper, how long can we uh make her think that we're headed where she's telling us before we deviate? We can still with the with the adjustments, not very long. We're talking about midships or forward. I think we should get let's get as close as we can without setting any any alarms off. I'll keep the handshake going and everything's friendly. Um, and then you just let me know when she's going to notice that we're not we're not headed that way. <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm laughing in the back, saying, "Probably right, when we're not headed that way." The guy's a damn genius. I don't like this. I don't like this, buddy. Doesn't look right. Doesn't look right. So as she's drifting down, right, carefully slowing, right, incrementally, you're drifting down the length of the Sulaco, right. You're passing the point underneath is where the main cargo bay, the main vehicle bay, is, right. And, you know, she just kind of casually makes a joke. Oh, well, I could do like a, a combat insertion into the main bay. Sure. If there's no other ships in there. Sounds good to me. Let's get ready. <laughs> so she just starts to laugh. Says, you guys are nuts. So she was doing a gentle roll, right? And then she just punches it, and the ship flips, right? Everyone's tossed to the other side of, of the cabin, and it rolls over, and she reorients, and she's diving at the belly of the Sulaco. And you can see out, or Geek can see out the, out the combat, out the, out the cockpit window of tracer fire and... and heavy gunfire just for a moment before it's cut off from view by the actual body of the Sulaco itself. And this is when we see that the landing bay doors are wide open. So we were being and fired upon? You're by the ship's but, defense, but, but missed yeah. by a mile. Okay. And in that split second, you see that there's one landing craft present and only one, and it should be carrying two. And, so and it's one of up. ours, right? It's, it's one of our landing crafts. Yes. Okay. So jumper powers through it and uh, the, <laughs> past the point of no return, and you violently enter into the locking space and then are flattened backwards as she puts on the the thrusters. You will not be able to attain the, you know, the, the docking clamps, and she slams down. This is a very hot and dangerous drop. And she says something like, no, I didn't think we'd make that. <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> nice, nice work, Jumper. All right, boys, welcome Matt's out. All right. Good job, man. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, ladies, saddle up. Let's get this done. Okay, Baxter, this is why they pay you the big bucks. Get that sure smart is. gun ready. Sure is. All right, now the She's other big them. problem with the landing bay doors being open is that there is no atmosphere. All right. So uh, the question is, uh, uh, do we have access to to vac suits or sure. All right. or can I and, and can I can I remotely attempt to close those doors? I'm not sure. Can <laughs> you can you? certainly you can certainly do it given enough time. How much time okay. would you like? Do you want to do it quickly? I'll need a roll. Otherwise, yes, you yeah. can. Yeah, let's do it quickly. Okay. So, uh, Rock, I'm going to try to get this 
get this closed and get this make this a little bit safer for us. Are we good with that? If you can do it, go for it. Com check again? Yes. Yeah, I can't. Uh, yeah. It's going to take some time. Uh, okay. I don't think we got time there, buddy. Yeah. So you can either push it or or we can call it. It's your choice. Right. Just Start to put it in context. Up. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's the the Sulaco has gone on on a defensive mode, so you have to cut through the security protocols before you can get into the other protocols. It could take 10, 15 minutes of dancing back and forth while whatever what made happens. the Sulaco yeah. this way um, gets free reign to do what they want. So, sir, I tried to do this clean. You want me to try to do it dirty? If, if you can do it, get it done, Marine. It. Get it done. All right, so I'm going to push. Um, okay. And that immediately I get the yellow die as part one, of that push, correct? One yellow yeah. die. Yeah. And your stress goes up by one. Yeah. So put it down in your pool because it all goes up from here. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know yeah. that me. I'm good at dirty. Three successes. There you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> awesome. Oh, and we'd heard, the, we'd heard the rumors, yeah. You can do it faster <laughs> because you get – that's two – that's two stunts you get. So one of them yeah. is you can do it faster. But yeah, I'd like to do show it. off to impress jumper. Uh, yeah. No, actually, what we do is one one to do it faster, and another one to uh, help me uh, automatically remote operate if I need to get it in there again. The doors right. again. Awesome. I like it. Yeah. Okay. So there is this shutter you know, through the ship, you're getting like second hand through the drop ship as the doors begin to cycle closed, you know, coming up to fill the space and, and closing to lock in. And, and once they finally join, and there's some difficulty because there's a little bit of debris which has to be smashed flat, right, first. Once there's a seal, then the atmosphere is rapidly pumped in. And so you s distantly start to hear, not just feel, the sounds of all these mechanisms coming into place, right? And then you can start to hear the alarm systems aboard the Sulaco cycling and cycling and cycling. All right. Once we, when, when we're getting ready to depart, Baxter, you're going to take point. Rios, squad leader position, so you're second man up. Uh, so you can direct them with taps, right, on shoulder taps, SRT style. Uh, then, uh, uh, Greek, you're third up, and I'll take the rear. All right. Remember, anybody, no mistakes. Mistakes means you die. Let's just keep talking. We got it. So jumper hits the release. The exit doors blast open, rattle down for quick deployment. Three, we're not taking taking point. Just doing the standard, checking the corners. I'm checking the corners. And, and I was before I leave. I tell Jumper, just uh, you get into any trouble, let us know. And uh, luckily, Greek, Greek Greek can take care of opening the doors for you should you need them. Actually, what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to show 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 uh, Jumper the button, right? So I'm going to rig it up so if she needs to open up those doors, she can. All right. Perfect. All right, Close so it's back to the first. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Close up the hatches to, to jumper, yeah. just to, you know, yeah. nobody getting on the ship or we're all gone. Right. And uh, she seems to be coming down, right, from a real big adrenaline high. So, like, her hands are shaking and her, her, her aviator glasses have slid down on a sheen of sweat down the bridge of her nose, but she's also obviously really proud of of what she's done right awesome. um, as you move down the ramp it's going to be baxter who first sees the signs of damage inside the bay there are huge gouges in the metal plating 
and what looks like to be smears of deck plating have been eaten away by acid. What the hell is that? Doesn't look like there is also this slick and sticky whitish yellowish dried almost like thick white milk uh, all over the deck plating what the hell is this do we what it, what do we know anything about this or is this the first time any of us have seen this before there are many things this could be this among them that could be the internal hydraulic fluid for a synthetic okay so looks like some major malfunction here yeah, yeah looks like so malfunction. would a would a i don't i don't know since there's so much gunk on the ground would a any sort of like tracking or or observation role give us a clue sure what you can tell just naturally mm -hmm. is that before whatever this stuff is dried multiple pieces of it multiple pieces of something were dragged through it to the point where eventually there isn't enough left of this stuff to be dripping anymore so going off and, and toward a, the, 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 the bay the door or the yeah. crew quarters no, but I, i'm guessing that there, there, there would be no corpses anyway because this was decompressed right? right so if there was anybody here they they're they're in the void a long time ago wherever this happened because we don't know that this happened here because right. the ship was moving all right so best we can do is go inside all right let's move anybody got a motion tracker i got it okay all right baxter head out we'll do so the bay is sealed, all of its various, uh, you know, like the armory sealed, the vehicle containment sections sealed, you know, for the, the walkers, for the loaders, for the um, APCs, that, that kind of stuff. All the stuff is sealed up, put away pretty nicely, other than the signs of, of damage and the missing vehicles, right? And the doors are all closed, but the first door that you come up to, the closest door, bears signs of having been physically tampered with. Huge gouges again, like on the deck. Not plane. like that. Um, uh, in a way that a Comtech like Geek wouldn't have to do because it's USCMC tech, and he's a he's a USCMC tech, <laughs> right? Mm. He would bypass it in a completely different way. <laughs> but whoever this person was, they took it apart in order to make it do what they wanted. Yeah. I was looking right Mar at you and say door. Yeah, Mar Marine, <laughs> Marine lockpick is usually a boot, but. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this get this opened. So same thing, ComTech. I've got my five plus two plus my one stress. Plus I've got bypass, which gives me another plus two. Cool. Nice. Uh, with one success. All right. And a three on the yellow. <laughs> <laughs> you mean not one of these? <laughs> Correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just that. All right. So... The, the door opens. The atmosphere is fine on the other side, uh, although there are signs that fire countermeasures have been deployed. Not right here, but you can smell it in the air. I, just, just for you know, clarity's sake, 
uh, Bodhi would know that when that when Rock says, you know, you, you're number two on the line, you're you so it's a squad leader position. So you're gonna Bodhi should kind of determine and tell Baxter which way to go. So mm. so Rock's holding back, he's letting Bodhi do the squad leader thing, and he's just being NCO in the back for a moment. Just so, so we'll move quicker. Okay, so we're we're to the back of the ship. What's uh, well? I'll just I guess I'll just take the shortest route to the to the bridge, right? To the command. Okay. Center. So we're midships ahead of the reactor core, right? On the bottom deck. Flight deck is all the way forward. Top deck. Upper deck. Okay. And it's it's not an area that the Marines are regularly, regularly. called to, right? Most of this is, is done on automatics. So. Right, so uh, check those corners, and uh, uh, I'll be tapping on Baxter's shoulder to, to get him moving. Um, and there's nothing in the motion tracker, right? I'm yeah. keeping my eye on it though. It says I gotta figure out the power pack roll. I didn't find that information in the sections that I read, but I'm guessing it's the same as everything. Is whatever we got as consumables, it's and you roll it. Supply roll, I guess. That's, right. Yeah. So, as part of consumables, you get air, power, food, and water, but it's we a don't power, get. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know what how big that dice pool would be to start. Right. So as you begin making your way down the corridor, because there was a fire, there are some doors which are closed, major bulkheads. And there are some doors that should be closed which are not. They've been overridden, which leads kind of a trail, and it's a trail that's moving in the same general direction that you want to go, the flight deck, or it could be going to other sensitive areas, such as the computer core or the weapons control systems. Hmm. But right now, at least, there's a certain unity of purpose. But before you make it off of this deck, the ship goes to emergency lighting. Hmm. It's very dark, and there's just a dim greenish yellow glow just close enough to be able to see movement, but not bright enough to be able to see detail uh, unless you're right up with it with your own personal light. Is there any place for me to jack in uh, to try to override that? Well, sure. So, so I guess uh, right now uh, Baxter's got his shoulder lamp on. Oh, lamps on, infrared, infrareds on. I'm, I'm ready. <coughs> Come on, I'm not skipping a beat, man. This is not my first rodeo. Um, okay. So I'm just poking, to, poking my head in all these rooms. So I guess drums, I guess it. this is this is the time to mecha mechanically use the motion tracker, right? Because I got to do a supply roll after each use. So uh, you look it up in the gear. I, all I can is it gets up to long range, so I'll I'll take a look. Okay. So is I powered or it was us? And it's five for the motion tracker. The, the particular equipment uh, will tell you. The dice pool that you use. Uh, yeah. Uh, tracker will automatically detect presence of any large moving object with a long range indoors. Only the tech moving objects. That's it. And I guess uh, the, whoever's trying to evade the tracker gets to to do mobility roll or something. I don't know. 
Yeah. No, it says automatic. Yeah. It's, it's automatic, but if the enemy is small or well hidden, they may you may have to make an observation roll. Right. But you know. <laughs> Which means it's yeah. Anthony's problem telling us what to do. Exactly. <laughs> That's really <laughs> now just from a experience perspective, right? If all of these adjustments have been made, the, the doors have been overridden and whatnot, the, unless they've left some kind of rear guard behind, there's no ship here that they came in on or, or anything along those lines. They may have Just moved on. All the way up. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean so, the, the 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 bay door were open, right? So yeah. and there's one of the one of the ships is missing. So we have to assume that at least some of the people here left, if not all. Right. But still, you have to check. Never it out. assume. Never assume. Right. So do we want me to try to turn these lights back on or what? I don't think we have time. Just keep moving. Yeah, let's 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 go. Let's get to the bridge, guys. Come on. Okay. There are a couple of ways up, including vertical ladders, and there are corrugated stairs, and of course there are elevators. But that ladder option would have to be reactivated, automatically shut down because of fire and combat. Not a the stairs. Yeah, let's take the stairs. We can keep covering arcs of fire just in case. Okay. Okay. Out of curiosity, how cautious are you being? I'm pretty cautious. Oh, yeah, very. We're going full stealth as much as we can, except for yeah. the light. All right. But we're waiting for pirates, so we're like, you know, yeah. sweeping corners and making yeah. sure nobody. Yeah, we're in a battlefield as far as we're concerned. Right. Yeah. So now we want to take the stairs. Like, do we do we follow the trail of breadcrumbs to see where that leads? Yeah, I think looks we keep like following. Looks like this. Looks like there's a you know path, a definite path of open doors and you know, big doors yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, well, that, I doubt they're closing doors behind them. So that path leads you to one of the main uh, stairwells through the ship, right? Hitting all the all the major crew decks and skipping the maintenance levels. Let's go in the direction of the flight deck, or the uh, the bridge rather, and then come in there. Let's take it. Okay. I would like from Baxter an observation check at minus two. Oh, minus two. Right. Don't, so that's, sir, don't fail this. Please don't fail this. Please don't fail this. Let's see. It's wits plus observations. So that's only three dice now. Okay. Oh, I got a success. Yeah, right on. Right on. The stairs strung across. There is a, a wire that just caught the right glint of light. Uh, uh, I, do, I do the whole thing. Booby trap. I hear Baxter say booby trap, and I immediately move, move to get ahead of everybody. Um, I want to assess. Okay. How would you like to approach it? Right now, all you can see is a wire. It's just dark enough. Like, Baxter's light has to hit it just the right way to see it. It's a, it's a tiny filament. Uh, I'm thinking observation. Okay. Just three, put the lamp in both the rest. Yeah, yeah see what it's yeah. attached to. So it's going to be my five plus my two observation plus my stress die that has no ones on it. 
Oh, that stress thought. Yeah, so which is a good one. Son of a monkey. Um, I can't. My initial assessment is I can't figure out what the hell this thing is connected to. Um, uh, sir, uh, I mean, it's not here to drop a pinata on us. Um, do you want? Do we want to step over? You want me to dig, dig, dig more? First of all, that's Sergeant Geek. I work for a living, but uh, uh, let's let's take another look. Let's, uh, Bodie, why don't you why don't you uh, help him out with that? I'll keep sure. watch back here. So I'll go over and 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 have a look. See what we can see. What we can see. This is a what? An observation roll. Now that I know yeah. what it is. This is, and of course now we are assisting on a task that is already in process. Mm -hmm. So do I just roll a one extra helping die for the yep. for the thing, right? Because what, that's what you do. You provide modifications to the original roll. So maybe I'll just roll a regular dice, and oh. there it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Beginner slug. Yeah. <laughs> He's not a beginner. He's a squad. No, no. No, no. I mean, we. For, oh. <laughs> for us. And how many dice are you rolling, Craig? Uh, well, 17. More. More. Oh, okay. more. more. <laughs> so. There's this moment where it seems like this filament, this tiny filament, right, may have just been left behind to slow somebody down, right? It's just attached by some kind of polymer glue, right, to the railing and to the wall, right? And like we're this close to making that pronouncement. It's, it's nothing, right? But why would someone go to all this effort? And that's when the pieces click together. This is directly connected into the fire retardant system. And if it had been triggered, you would have been hosed with tons of fire retardant chemical, which is lethal. Mm. Someone doesn't want us going upstairs, sir. Uh, I, what don't I, think the Marines, I don't think the cars in control of the ship anymore either. Can can we can can we deactivate this in case we have to to do a rapid evacuation from here? It should we'll be possible to, to step it. over it because it is a simple physical trigger. Okay. But it's very hard to see, and to deactivate it, maybe it could just be cut. Right. Maybe, yeah, maybe cut it, move far enough away from it, since we know where it should be coming from. I'm stepping up the damn thing. Big steps. <laughs> um. Anybody got something? Can we mark this? Anybody got something we can mark this with? Actually, it's it's, uh, it's probably well. I I don't have anything that looks like rope on my on my equipment list. Probably no iron rations either. Why would you need rope for this? I was think, yeah, no, I was thinking that uh, that if we can tie tie something to it, and then when we're far enough away, just tug it you open and let it activate behind us. Drop a damn flare for God's sake. Um, I, I'm going to try to take, can I take my knife out and just gouge a mark there? So if I'm running, if any of us are running down the stairs, we know to watch for, yeah. watch for a mark, something that's, yeah, that's easier to see than the filament. Sure. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to, a lot take, of the interior take, of the crew sections are some kind of plastic, right? So, yeah. So that's what I'm, I'm, I'm putting a big X over the step so that it's eye level as we're. As we're headed down, knowing that it's there, we can keep yeah. our eyes on it. Um, yeah. When uh, B Baxter runs screaming. 
don't know. All right. Yeah, that, 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 that's exactly my medical. That's why. That's why. Right. Somebody's going to run like an idiot back, <laughs> back into the thing. <laughs> All right, yeah, watch, your watch your step. Watch your step. And just, just, just as, as I'm gouging it in, um, I, I, I do kind of tap the tip of my knife on Baxter, and I tap the tip of the knife on the axe. <laughs> <laughs> let's go, let's go, ladies. All right. Are you going faster or slower than before? You like slower. speed. Yeah, yeah, I say, to I to yeah, watch for slow. more booby traps. Mm. Right, yeah. Particularly so, on the stairs, yeah. My lamp is focused down, so I take it, take the shoulder lamp and I'm immediately keeping it down. Um, so everybody everybody keep track of corners and stuff like that. I'm focused on the steps going up. I'll let him do that. I'm, I'm focused on like what I can actually see, what might be a, a, a movable threat. And I'm trusting them to look down, so I'm looking at keeping an eye on okay people hiding in corners okay so the first three decks right this you move up in about 10 minutes right? moving from section to section from section to section we lost time with the with the booby trap we're about midway up the sulaco and now more options are open right it's on this level that we can gain easy human access to the computer core right. well easy access to the computer core and one floor up is access to you know the main gun battery magazines and and the like. Again, from a maintenance perspective, right? uh, fire crews uh, are mainly automatic. So. Right. Or continue on. I turn to the Sarge and say, hey, you know, I can, I can shut these down, but I think we should check things first. But if you need me to shut these down, I can shut these down. I think we should uh, check the main guns. Yeah. yeah. I want to see if they've been fired. Well, we know they've been fired, right? Because we... right. yeah, they were fired. They fired at us, and both times, right, on the ship and on the the taxi. I don't know if they fired on us, Serge. We weren't hit once. So lock and well, that, It's not a slash. That, that, that's a that's a good point. the The question is, can we can we verify targeting from here, or does that have, does that have to be done from the ship, from the bridge? You could do it from here. Let's as take a long look. as you have the right protocols to to get into the system. Yep. Uh, can I go ahead and use my? Um, does this uh, extend from my uh, stunt from before? or Do I need a fresh roll? This extends from, from okay before. Right. So, as the squad moves into this control area, right, the fire control area, things are really quite perverse. I don't like that word. <laughs> the door, right, which at first seems to just be open, like all the other open doors, right? They've been they've been forced open by a skilled but not, you know. USCMC trained technician, but this door is actually crumpled open. Like something really strong opened it? Physically opened. Yeah. Right. And it, it doesn't look like it was blown open. It doesn't, it, you know, it doesn't look like there's a, a radical change of pressure on one side of the door or another. It's more like, um, the edge of the door has received force in a small area, and the the door is almost accordioned in and and rolled a little bit. So, like a a sardine can is too neat an example, but it's that kind of idea. And of course, this kind of blast door, what could have the force to do that? 
There's no, there's no, nothing that looks like suit from explosives. No. It's probably one of those pirates using a load lifter. You know, Could be something like that. that. Or or someone, or someone's been to the gym. <laughs> yeah. One of those wedge. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they, they probably just had a. They probably just had the bacon and eggs MRE. Uh, <coughs> a hell of a crowbar. Right. And One inside the room, right? Inside the room, there is. Well, there's two things. There is a large gout of what would have been liquid, which is now a brown and sticky stain across the white computer console and the black seats, right? Like a, a jet of this material has become quite tacky looking, like a, a, a crust formed on top and then kind of peeled back a little bit with darker coloration underneath. And there is a large, almost blanket-sized, thin, nearly transparent, like yellowy transparent um, plastic or acetate um, covering oh. Oh. in the center of the room. What the hell is that? Is that blood? Check the corners and, you know, looking around. Now, this is a room with long computer banks. It has a, a small section for for a, a computer maintenance crew to assess computer targeting problems and, and whatnot. But much of this area is is the access point for crawl spaces into uh, the mechanicals of the of the weapon oh, system. Right. So there's a lot so I, of corners. Uh, all right. So uh, uh, Greg, uh, get working on the computer. See if you can find out. Uh, what we're talking about. Um, Baxter, keep overwatch with your pop gun. Bodie and I, let's take a look around here and see if, if we can get a better idea of what the hell just went on in here. No freaking direction to keep overwatch in, but I'll keep my eyes open, man. Yeah. Got too many. I, I, I'm going to go to the console. Um, I'm also going to have my pistol out. <laughs> So I, I might have I might have I might have the uh, pulse rifle on my back, but I've got the pistol out and I'm going to one handed my uh, pass pass codes. Right <laughs> now, the console is just covered. It would have been liters of yeah. I mean, yeah. you guys are you guys are a combat unit. You haven't seen blood this old, but it certainly puts you in mind yeah. of blood. This blood, is ninja like scroll blood ever blood from from being shot. This is a jet, right? Ninja scroll, I tell you. <laughs> but to get there, you have to pass over this covering. And this is like a, this is like a tarp? Mm -hmm. That's what your brain said at first. Okay. Like fabric? But, is it like a thin well, it's, fabric? Well, it's translucent and parts of it are transparent. And parts of it are thicker than others, and Some it's membrane. Well, yeah, membrane or. Is it flat or does it seem like it's covering? It's just, it's just been discarded and and shredded. Parts of it look ripped. Parts of it look inside out. Can tell us what this is. Well, can you call your biology professor back home? Where's the computer going, man? Yeah, he's right. Yeah, Let's geek. get going. All right, all right. I'm, I, I'm, all right. <laughs> You're You're pressure. Everybody's like, yeah, geek, come on. <laughs> See if you can uh, lock uh, out the the main guns so that yeah, you know yeah. you can deny access to the bridge. Yeah, and, and also and and see the 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 firing solutions, you know, to see what they've been fired at. And Rios and I will take a look at the access hall, see if we can find sign of anybody coming and going from here, other than whatever the hell this is. But if I'm understanding things, I can't get to this thing without dealing with the this, right? Or can I get to this? Can I get to the you console? Could, you could step on it. You could step over it. 
it's, it's, it's been ripped up so you can try and avoid it and you don't have to step on it right yeah. it's just you can't not see it it's big enough to... oh, okay yeah, yeah okay all right so yeah that's i'm gonna i'd like to not touch it because i don't know what the fuck it is so um i would like to not touch it but i would like to get to where i need to go all right so you step over you got your gun out and of course the there's a blood shadow all right so the inside of the seat is pristine, although the back of the seat was was coated with with the blood spray. Right, so you could actually sit in the seat and not actually, you know, get get messy. Oh, I'm gonna stand. <laughs> Everyone else now, is now, covered with blood except this. Yeah. Now, okay. now we know that Greek is a is a prissy marine. Yeah. <laughs> he likes his dress blue. Right. And uh, you know, as you as you're stepping over the the thing on the floor, the, the loose thing on the floor, it's almost like part of it looks like a hand. I'm sure it's just an optical illusion in the light. But uh, <laughs> I'm going to point to it as I'm continuing on, like, ah! as I just keep going. All right. Mother's voice says, collision in two hours, 29 minutes. Enough time to watch a movie, but that's not what we're here for. Come on. <laughs> Get done. All right. So the condition of the keyboard will apply a difficulty penalty of one. Okay. And if you are as squeamish as it seems, that might be a difficulty penalty of two. <laughs> yes. That's, I, but that's when I say, you. yeah, <laughs> I just don't want to sit in a chair. So, yeah, I'm just going to stand. It's not, you know, I'm not holding my nose or anything. Okay, well, just yeah, it's like the, I just want to be, I want to be sticking. on the same wavelength with your, with your Yeah, I just, I, I don't, I don't feel comfortable getting comfortable. <laughs> it's, it's, it sounds like the R and the T are sticking for them. There's no way he's touching the O or the Q. I can't hit the shift key, so I just caps lock the mother. Yeah, take, take <laughs> M, 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 his M32 pencil. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm, right. can I take just the minus one without? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I've got five plus the one. Uh, which should be two, um, and then I've got my one stress die. Bypass will not work here. This is strictly for locked doors. Right. Uh, so, yeah, like, I got a little adrenaline going. A little adrenaline going. It might be what fueled my ability to get in there. <laughs> so I do have a success. Nice. Okay. All right, so what do you want to know, or in what order do you want to know things? The first thing I want to I, I want to assess I want to assess what initiated guns firing. So what initiated um, the silico to decide that it needs to fire on something? So logs, protocols, everything. All right. So a very familiar uh, schematic of the pirate vessel from the from the previous briefing from the Montebello. Uh, indicates uh, proximity, proximity alarm triggered the autonomic defenses of the Sulaco and combat was engaged. Then there's a brief period of two hours of downtime. Then there was intentional firing of the guns with the target being the, the pirate vessel. Oh, the pirate vessel. The pirate vessel. And at this point, ammunition in the main guns was depleted. Now, Sulaco still bears a full complement of its missile weapons, um, but its, its rail guns have been depleted. So what you would have witnessed would have been, you know, the electric light show of of tracer fire. There we go. There we go. So so 
I, I share that. I say, uh, look, um, the automation came up when when the ugly got it within range, the one that's spinning out there, and then maybe somebody woke up, maybe somebody noticed and focused on it. They emptied the real gun. So I think by the time we showed up, boys, she she was out. She was just shooting us with lights. Hmm. And and we and it just kept it. So no manual. Uh, the second the second initiation was manual, right? And, and then everything after that was automatic, and okay. just the one weapon system. Okay, right. Can so, I tie? Oh, go ahead. The, I want. I want to. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep over talking. You go ahead. It's all right. Um, the original combat engagement. The ship chose the most effective combat system. Uh -huh. The manual combat engagement, they had control of one combat system. Can I? The, yeah. So the, yep, yeah, keep going. So that's it. Okay. Can, can I get a sense of timing, right? So I want to, I want to now bring up and try to, try to look at uh, the doors. So when did the when did the cargo doors open? And I want to line that up to to this whole process. That is just before the two hours of downtime. The system was put into a maintenance cycle. It was okay. tricked into a maintenance cycle. You figure out if they actually fired on us with anything? They they didn't have they had nothing left, Baxter. They were just shooting lights at us, and it looks like it looks like they 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 told mother to go into maintenance. They bolted. They opened up the door, and which I guess gave it gave them enough time to skedaddle. And uh, once she came out of maintenance, you know, she was you know back back trying to fire, but she was. She, so because of Baxter's question, you're you're back looking at the schematics again and the you know, the, the reports of everything. And this is where this one little detail pops out and that this was 12 days ago. Oh, shit. So the firing so, today was today, right? But everything we're talking about with the, with the pirate ship engagement and the manual engagement on the pirate ship was 12 days ago. Yeah, that happened two weeks ago. And, and, the, so, and the, the emptying was... 12 days ago. So right. she's been trying to without... control these big ship guns yep. manually, right? Yeah. So you think they, you of... think they, I know they fired on our, our drop ship. Do you think they, this, can you tell if they ever fired anything, even just lights at the Montebello? It, it looks, it looks like they, they ran out of bullets 12 days ago before we even got here. So when, when we came in, she, I mean, she had no she boys left. The, was the Sulaco yeah. on automatic? Yeah. Yeah. So, so weapons are on automatic. They're trying to keep off borders because they ran into those pirates. Somebody woke up. Somebody set that booby trap. So it's either the pirates or maybe one of the Marines on board the Sulaco trying to keep borders off. Can I tell... When the manual started, was there any type of like? To, is there an access code that needed to be used? Like, was were they? Was it forced manual, or was it protocol to go to go into manual? Because at that point, someone had manual control of one weapon system. But oh, I can't well, tell how. Yeah. Does that make sense? Um, like, oh, like whether it was a hack or whether it was right. the insertion of a code. Yes, it, there's no login information. Okay, yeah. So it's the pi the pirates took manual control, guys. A a any weapons, any weapons tech would have would have just just gone through normal process. One question: We yeah. haven't seen any signs of a firefight. Not yet, right? Not no. yet. So for at least from the bay to here. We haven't seen 
well, the ammunition is caseless, but we haven't seen bullet holes on the on right. The and you would have had wall. had anybody been shooting at anybody. You saw so, but, you saw gouges and you saw acid. Right. So we got we got pirates who got th this far into this vessel without meeting any resistance from Marines. Yeah, that's super strange. Well, that, here's the other piece. So I I don't think the crew took the manual. I think someone came in here and did it and forced it, and they were shooting at that ship. So the pirates were shooting at their own ship? That makes yeah. no sense, Geek. At all. <laughs> now, it's taken know. Geek quite a while to get this information. I have not long time, but it's a long time for the people right. who are waiting for Geek to finish. So I get an observation yeah. check from... Everybody else? Everybody else. Good. Right I recommend today. lots of sixes. That's my recommendation. I got two You're sixes. recommending sixes? I got two recommending two. sixes. Not a goddamn thing. <laughs> you got two, Rock? Yes, Nothing. sir. Not a goddamn thing. Three All right. Now, two things. Or two One. successes. Yeah. One. There is a smell in here. You've been in here long enough to sort out the smell of dried organic matter and the smell of whatever that thing is on the floor and just the overall smell of fear. But there's a, there's a sharp chemical smell in the air that is not normal for the ship. It's faint, but it's, it's there. And the other thing is maybe just for a second there was a ping on the motion track. Well, I, I'm about to come in the smell and I pull up the tracker and look at it. So I think we got we're not alone on this ship, uh, uh, guys. Maybe within 20 meters down those crawl spaces, something moved. Looks like it was in or the crawl not. space. Might have been something in the crawl space, but it was very brief, that ping. Yeah, I think that's something you take, you let the, uh, let the heavy guns take care of, I'm not crawling down there. Not, not yet, anyway. So um, I'm gonna lean you know, looking toward the crawl space, right? Like at the opening of the crawl space. I got my gun and my and my lamp, and I'm going, "Hey, buddy, uh, your pirate buddies are gone. This ship is headed to a collision. You might as well come out. You get a chance to live." And so I'm going to try, you know, manipulation to to get somebody. Okay. Because, because uh, of course, it's going to be a pirate. What else could it be with a large, discarded alien skin on the floor? What else could it be? Who said anything um, about an alien skin? I it's a polymer. It's a polymer. It's a polymer. Yeah, it's, a, it's a polymer. Fabric. And, yes. And what's odd and, is how the pirates brought buckets of acid with them and just kept yeah, spilling it. They're so <laughs> clumsy. It doesn't work. Yes. <laughs> it's detergent. They were trying to clean the ship. It's detergent. detergent. Perfect. Yeah. Sanitation. <laughs> and sanitizer. <laughs> no, I, I noticed I it's interesting that the that the players needed to vent a little stress. A little bit. So I'm wondering <laughs> about bit. the soldiers. Did the yes. soldiers. Right, but right. I got my rifle. I'm doing this manipulation with my rifle. Right. Yeah. Back, just, yeah. back in the just, 70s, buckets of acid meant something else, but you got you got to feel through them. And, and, and let's, let's, let's be clear too. Like, I mean, Baxter. I've asked Geek one damn question. Did they fire on us? I've got 500 like places and crawl spaces to look at, and he's taking forever with this thing. And I'm just like, no wonder I didn't notice anything. I'm looking at like, which direction do I look in? Just Somewhere between done. forever and 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah and we've got two ships. You know, we, yeah, we've got a while, dude. We got a while. You know, we got stuff to do. So I'm pissed. All right, manipulation. All right. So my manipulation is four, four dice. Oh, As he says that, I started checking my, the loads on my <laughs> grenade launcher. 
<laughs> nope. Oh, no. Nothing. There is no answer, but I would like an observation check from you. Nope. Nothing. You're just going to let the dice treat you that way? You're not going to push them around? <sighs> Well, I'm a little nervous here now. Let's 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 uh, let's push it once. And see what happens. Well, somebody's manipulation roll worked, but it wasn't yours, dude. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. But now I see it. <laughs> How many dice does Mother have in manipulation? <laughs> All of the dice. Uh, I'm starting to get frustrated with the situation. Is what's going on? All right. Now, there's no ping, right? Sergeant's over there with the motion track. There's no audible sound. Mm -hmm. But as you're standing there, gun raised, light, you know, looking down this crawl space into the darkness, right? Your own shadow is blocking a lot of what you can see. You can see movement from one side of the tunnel to the other. Oh. It's clear as, as the nose on your face, right? So just sort of jump back a little bit, you know, tightened rifle and the, okay, I can see you there, buddy. Come on. Sarge, there's someone back here. All right. <laughs> okay, so I, I join him and, and uh so obviously what I what I'm picturing is they're like crossing crawl spaces. That's why you saw movement from one side to the other. Is that what we're talking about? Juncture. Is it like a juncture? All right. So I'm gonna activate my light and try and shine it towards the crawl spaces in the crawl spaces towards which it should be moving. So we get a glimpse. Okay. So with the two lights. Right, kind of defeats the the thrown shadow of, of just Bodhi there by himself, right, in the hallway. And that's where the lie of the shadows is revealed. Hanging upside down. Caught in the pipes and conduits that control the motion of the guns, right? Is a fellow in pretty motley combat dress, you know, like different uh, uniform pieces from, from different services and, and a whole bunch of different patches, you know, like corporate patches and, and Marine patches and governmental patches and you know, uh, just there as like decoration. But somebody killed this man, right? Someone blew a big hole right through his chest. And he's, you know, his legs are caught in the, the top of, of this crawl space where there's a junction, a vertical junction, and four horizontal junctions. And that's where he's, he's dangling. I guess he was intruder, prudent at this juncture. Yes, is he swinging <laughs> from the from something? So was he yes. the motion? Yeah. yeah, the motion is just, you know, the hand. Okay. It's a corpse. I, I look back to, towards uh, Baxter, and, and we, it's a corpse, gents. Um, Good. Okay. One of ours. Good. I'm not sure yet. Not in the uniform. I, I scoot over so I can get a look at what Sarge oh, is pointing. Yeah, so so if I see look. the guy, I'm going to say, got a lot, lot of patches right there. He doesn't know where to put them. That's got to be a pirate for, right there. Let's look for ID. It's got to be got a, a pirate. <laughs> it's got to be a pirate, Sarge. Scavenging clothes and insignia. Or some well, there's a guy. whole motley collection, as I say. Right. Right. But this is someone who, at some point in their life, went for a United States Colonial Marine Corps tattoo. 
and looking at their face, although it's they've been dead for a little while, looking at their face, you'd have to say that they are closer to 60 than to 40. And I'm guessing it's not high and tight uh, marine, you know, regulation haircuts or... It may have been, but, you know, hair continues to grow. Right, more. right. Okay. And I don't know, is he carrying anything, any idea or anything? No. No. Just oh. um, on his belt are the similar tools to to what geek might need to get down and dirty with some electronics systems, you know, like replacement logic modules and and uh, yeah. so he's quite quite ripe. Okay, so and, and it looks like he was shot in the chest. It looks like he was shot from behind in the chest because it's an exit wound. The problem is, is he's dangling there. There is no entry wound. What the fuck? <laughs> and that's where we will cut yes. for tonight. <laughs> Before you get four like, stress dice. Come in, just turning around. What the what? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let us just say that closer to 60 than 40. I was a little bold yeah. about that. Because I said, wait a minute. Huh. Who does that yeah. remind me of? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, been, oh, crap, it's me. Been, been, there, been there, done that. Yeah. As long as you don't have logic modules on your, in your belt right now, you're okay. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> um, so I, I've got a scoop, but before I scoop, one, um, first time playing and it's as good as I anticipated it to be mechanically. Um, uh, two, yes, you had built up enough tension that I think us players <laughs> needed to make a joke. So hats off on that, <laughs> Anthony. Um, and uh, three, please keep talking because I'll watch the recording later. But uh, I appreciate yeah. it, guys. All right, have fun being a dad. Cheers. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> oh, so that's I a lot of failure. To. I also have to go, but okay. uh, but I mean, this is just a very light sample intro into the pipe of of Alien. But how do we feel so far? Uh, it, feels, uh, it just feels good, and I'm, it looks like Ripley saved our lives so far. Yeah, and it, it <laughs> felt it felt natural taking the stress to like reroll the observation, right? So they're starting to get a little bit unnerved. Uh, and I guess from now on, momentum will take its course, right? It just felt like, uh, well, it's not really fair because we're rolling two, four, four, three dice, and that's a little less than, uh, that's around 50% chance of success. So it doesn't really, it's not, it shouldn't be that, it's that much of a surprise that we roll a couple of failures in a row because it's about 50% chance of failure. So. And of course, failure can be there's nothing there, and success can be there's nothing there. Right, but right. but I'm just looking at the die roll because that that yeah. gives you sort of like an intuitive feel of I got four dice, I can make this work, and it's like eh, it's about yeah. flipping a coin. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, we got some pretty bad die rolls and some large dice pulls because the the the, pro the probabilities are actually better than that, you know, they're not awful. Right. Now so what, I'm, what, what I'm interested in, what I'm interested in is you know like um, these are highly trained characters like you know we've got we've got Baxter he's there taking point he's got the smart gun he's not afraid of getting into a firefight I mean he might be cautious or something about being shot but you know he's there to to bring the pain as it were right yeah. and when you do roll a failure on on a weaker pool, like that observation one, what are you doing in your mind to represent what that failure means? Because all I was saying is that, well, you know, you don't see anything, right? You know, the hallway's empty or whatever. Um, does anything happen? Is there any process for, for rationalizing failure 
in terms of who your character is? Well, I mean, yeah, but just for me, I mean, like I even said, like that one, that one loan, I'm looking everywhere. There's just way too many places to cover at that particular point. So yeah, right. I didn't notice. I didn't notice what the Sarge noticed at that moment. I think it's, it's kind of depend on the particular situation, right? On the, on the particular, because it depends on the mood. Is something distracting you? Is it too many options? Is, you know. Right. But is that something that you actually do? You think, well, yeah, maybe I failed because I'm distracted or maybe I'm, um, uh, yeah. I'm looking the other way or you know, that kind of stuff. I'm just curious. Yeah, it, it, it might, right? If you're looking, it's really dark and then you fail. It's like, well, it's really dark. I can't, like, there's kind of something there, but I can't see it. Well, and and so, I, I, yeah. I think the way you catch the question is particularly important because yeah, with, with my, my same old uh, joke, all dice are narrative, right? It's not the same failing on eight dice as it is failing on three dice. So yeah. it should be a different explanation why you fail on eight dice than why you fail on three dice. Yeah. Right. Much well, less I can't your speak. fault. Yeah. I can't speak for Craig, Craig, but like contact type stuff, I, I've done enough like amateur, just messing around just with databases where you're looking for like one little symbol that shouldn't be there. Like, I mean, if somebody uses a slash or a colon, they could, they could like throw off the whole thing because it's a command. And it's, if you're looking at like line after line after line of stuff, it's easy to miss something. Even if you, you know, and you know what you're looking for. So that's, you know, it doesn't, it's not a skill thing. It's just like, you know, man, you're after a while, you're like, so yeah, there, there's ways to rationalize, you know, the failures. And of course, you know, he's doing it under a bit of stress, you know, at, at, at that point as well. And there's the blood <laughs> or whatever that stuff is. So yeah, I, I, I think it's pretty easy to rationalize that. Um, I, I did like so far this idea like that, like, I mean, at least in Baxter's mind, this is really, really wrong because this is a Marine ship. Like something's just wrong. You know, yeah. like where the hell are the Marines? Yeah. And, and I like and the that, atmosphere, like the emergency lighting is on, everything is dark, you know, chains swinging, stuff like that. <laughs> like <in> the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that's the, the coolest part, like how, how the hell did a pirate get in here and no Marines were there to stop him, right? So that's, right. that's pretty right, awesome. that, that would like strike at the core of the core, right? How is this well, even possible? Exactly. And so it's a, it's an it's a ego thing. This is, this is not right. Something, you know, something's really wrong here. Right. Now, what about pushing? Did you not want to push? Did you First not want, I to didn't roll? want to push? Yeah. No, I wanted to roll. I didn't want to push, but it felt like, you know, there's something there. We can hear the movement, you know, uh, I'm looking really hard. It's got to be there. I'm trying to get it to come out. And it's like, might as well push, you know, let's start engaging this thing, right? It's always a little hard to justify uh, the urgency, the sense of urgency that would lead you to start activating like the adrenaline, right? So, so that first stress roll, <clears throat> I feel is the one that you need to justify. You don't need to justify anything else, but the first one, it's like, are you getting worked up? Is this worth re-rolling? Is this, is this, am I feeling anxious about this? Because once you roll once, right, then the system is engaged. Now the engine is going to work by itself. But right. like Craig uh, pushed it when, because the situation was dire, right? So he needs right. to do the thing because we're in mid-flight and, you know, uh, but I'm thinking and to be clear, you know, that wasn't a wasted roll either. That was he prevented the missile systems of the Sulaco right from, from, engaging. from firing on the drop yeah. ship. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was yeah. important. So as long as there's like a time uh, limit, which we have, it's that we're going to crash in a couple of hours if we don't take care of this, uh, or as long as we have like I, I justified it to myself as like, he knows there's somebody in there because the motion tracker clicked. And, uh, and, you know, it's one of the pirates, they've, you know, there's, there's blood all over the place. So, you know, I want to see this guy because I know he's back there. And so that's, that's my own justification. But uh, yeah, I would, I would have pushed, I would have pushed that too. This is not just like, well, there might be a guy in there. It's like, holy crap, look at this room. What the hell happened here? What the hell happened to this other room? 
you know, and, yeah, I want to see who's in there. You know, I'm, it's, this isn't like a casual kind of thing. And there's blood. He might have a knife. He might have, you know, a gun, you know, so. It was one hell of a knife. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, a, that's a knife and a half, you know. Yeah. Just, you know, somebody, somebody was, you know, desperate enough to take a loader up there, open the door. Right. And, and then, where's the then, loader? Then, yeah. then, then take a giant machete, giant machete and, and like, you know. Hack this guy, but not only, not only hack so, have somebody's head off, but then eat the body, or you know, or right. dispose. Of, like, where's the hell's the body? Right. You know, it's, it's it's you know, it's not your typical. You walk in and see some dead civilians, or you know, it's this is like, what the hell is up, dude? And it's right. not even just like you're on a, a planet where maybe there's some kind of, you know, you know, xenomorph type, you know, you know, bug of, you know, what what you know, bug, whatever yeah. kind of stuff that what kind of stuff that we encounter. It's like on a marine ship. Home, safe space. Yeah. Yeah. Something's wrong. Something's really wrong. So I've got one last question. I don't know if, if you guys have any other comments, but um, is it effective or ineffective or neutral to have things described but not defined, such as the the white stuff in yes. the landing oh, yeah. bay, the dried dried blood, the translucent. I think that works. Thing. I think. I think that's the way to do it. Yeah, right. The landing bay is a tough choice because we know what happens in the landing bay of the Sulaco, right? So we, you're describing and we know. Uh, the brown stuff in the gun room, that was a little bit better, I think, because, you know, is it dried blood? Is it, uh, is it the resin that the xenomorphs secrete? And then the white film on top of that, you know, that that threw me off for like a minute or two, and then I'm like, oh, wait a minute, it's it's the discarded skin. Uh, but yes, much better because if you just say there's blood, dried blood on the thing, and there is a discarded alien skin, that that just deflates all the tension because you know as soon as you can define something. Right, it, the tension deflates. It's like even with the body swinging from the uh, in the ventilation shaft thing. Right, it's like well, there's movement back there. Is it an alien? Is is it a man? <laughs> is it Newt? Is it what is it? You know, and then you know, right. it's the dead guy. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, description is important, I think. Yeah, no, I like it. I like it. So I guess we'll play again. Right yeah. on. I know. Well, yeah. I'm sorry I didn't fulfill my promise of killing you all. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're just getting warm. Oh, the night is the night is young. Yeah. Give me like three more set, two more sessions to to do that. Yeah. Max, max twelve. <laughs> <sessions>. Yeah. <laughs> max twelve. Nice. Right. Awesome. This all is right. the kind of system where experience works at the end of a mission. All right. So you get a certain right. number of points at the end of the mission. Yeah. All right. We don't have to process any of that now. Should we live? Excellent. Should you yeah, live? Sure. If, and if you don't live, you don't need to process any of it. So, you yeah, know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> awesome. Take care, everybody. Yeah, yep. you too. Thank you. See you fellows later. We'll practice some songs from my gig. <laughs>